Hello and welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. And with me today, Doug Fambro, the CEO of Dicerna. So welcome and Thank looking you, forward Jane. to hearing more about the company. I love and, talking about uh, it. You founded this company. So tell me how that process was. Why? How long ago? And why did you find be a founder of Dicerna? Sure. I come to founding Dicerna as a scientist originally. Okay. I was trained in genetics okay. and was very interested in how we could apply the new emerging genetic technologies that really have been emerging over the last two decades, how we could apply them to actually help cure human disease. Mm -hmm. So after working on the Human Genome Project, doing all my training, I went into venture capital and was looking for what is the way we can actually capitalize on this information to make new mm -hmm. drugs. Technology that was invented in the late 90s called RNA interference. Okay. And RNA interference looked like the perfect tool where we could go in in a diseased patient where one of the genes in their body is inappropriately active, causing a disease state, turn that disease gene off. Hmm. Uh, and so RNA interference was, uh, RNAi, this technology yeah. was uh, emerging. The Nobel Prize was awarded wow. for it in 2006. I was involved in creating one of the very first RNAi companies in 2002. We sold that to Merck for a very large amount of money, uh -huh. $1.2 billion wow. in 2006. Uh -huh. And based on new advances in the RNAi field, I founded Dicerna in 2007, okay. right after we sold the first one to Merck. Uh -huh. And we've been developing it as a pharmaceutical technology ever since. It hasn't been a straight line. There have definitely been some false starts, sure. but we appear to be really on the money right now, and it's good to go as a human pharmaceutical technology. Well, wow, that sounds very exciting. I mean, business-wise and just mm -hmm. disease-wise and helping people. It's very gratifying to have gotten the technology from an idea of how you might make a drug to where we have it today, which has objectively excellent pharmaceutical properties and a whole series of pharmaceutical product opportunities that will really help diseased people mm -hmm. are now rolling out. Okay, so there is something else, a Galaxy technology platform and drug development strategy. Tell me about that. So Galaxy is how we've turned RNAi into a drug. Okay. So the RNAi mechanism, not to get too technical, but you take a little snippet of the gene sequence and you put it in a particular configuration. And once you introduce that into the body, the body's own systems take over and they will turn off the corresponding gene. It's extremely potent and extremely specific. That makes it very safe. It really looks like it's going to be an extremely safe technology. Galaxy is how we've configured that little piece of RNA that we put in such that it can be delivered through a simple subcutaneous injection that will last a long time. And when I mean a long time, probably at worst a shot once a month, just a simple, like, a, like an insulin needle for mm -hmm. a diabetic. Uh, more likely four times a year, and there may be certain circumstances where we can do it less frequently than that. So extremely convenient for the patient, extremely specific for the target gene, mm -hmm. and extremely safe as well. So Galaxy is all the chemistry we've done on the system and learning how to work with it, extensive testing in animal models that takes this technology and turns it into a pharmaceutical product that does the treatment that we're trying to accomplish, Mm -hmm. and does it in a very safe and convenient way for the patient. So that's how the, the application of yes. the technology. So now um, there are some core diseases that you focus on, rare diseases, cardiovascular, some liver mm -hmm. diseases as well. Can you elaborate on that, please? Sure. This technology, is it's taken us a long time to develop it to this point. And um, while I think there's a time in the future where we could apply this to every single disease, at this point where we've solved it, is for the liver. Mm. But it turns out liver is one of the most important tissues in your body mm -hmm. for disease. Mm. And so when we think about these disease areas you just talked about, all of them relate back to what goes on in the liver. So we started with rare diseases. A lot of metabolism in your body occurs in the liver. And a lot of rare genetic diseases are defects of metabolism, mm. where patients, because of a genetic deficiency, are missing one particular enzyme. Mm. And we can go in and compensate for that in the liver. So some of our key programs, we'll talk about primary hyperoxaluria, is a metabolic rare disease. Patients are missing one enzyme in the liver. We can compensate for that with RNAi. Cardiovascular disease is another focus area of us. Uh, 
obviously you think about the heart, you think about arteries when you think about cardiovascular disease, but the bad actors in cardiovascular disease, cholesterol, triglycerides, those are metabolized in the liver. That's where they come from, that's the primary site of action. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to intervene in order to treat these diseases, the liver is the site of intervention. Okay. A third area, liver infectious disease. Well, that's very straightforward. Uh, hepatitis B virus mm -hmm. is the primary virus we're going after. Uh, it's been very gratifying, I think, for the whole pharma industry to see the success in treatment of hepatitis C led by the company Gilead. We hope to be able to do the same sort of thing for hepatitis B, which is a more broadly spread virus mm -hmm. than hepatitis C. And then finally, chronic liver diseases. Chronic liver diseases are emerging as maybe the primary public health problem of the next couple of decades. Huh. It's really tracked the average weight gain and incidence of okay. obesity in the mm -hmm. population, mm -hmm. and that the buildup of fat in the body does tax the liver. Mm -hmm. it leads to fatty liver disease. It leads to something called NASH, or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, okay. that ultimately lead to cirrhosis and liver failure. Um, this is likely to be one of the major pharmaceutical areas of the future, and it is a perfect match for our technology, which is focused on the liver. So while we've only solved the pharmaceutical imp implementation of RNAi for the liver, that has opened up a really broad set of opportunities for us to pursue, much more than we can do alone as a small company. Now you mentioned uh, hyperoxaluria. So tell me about that. There's a, pl a preclinical program uh, for this particular disease. So tell me about that a little bit. Yes, primary hyperoxaluria is a rare disease and it is the first program for which we're using our Galaxy technology okay. to come up with what should be a functional cure for mm -hmm. these patients. Mm -hmm. I realize not many people have heard of primary hyperoxaluria. Yeah. Uh, only a few thousand patients in the United States have this disease, but it's a very serious disease mm -hmm. where your liver is missing an enzyme and because of that, it creates too much of a chemical called oxalate. And that oxalate, not really toxic, but it's eliminated in the urine, hyperoxaluria, too much okay. oxalate in the urine, mm -hmm. and along the way, it destroys the kidneys. Huh. So the patients go into full bore kidney failure, and the only way to treat this at that point is to give them new kidneys, but they also need a new liver. Mm. So dual organ transplant is mm. how it's treated. And you can imagine that's an extremely difficult procedure. Oh my goodness, yeah. There's a lot of comorbidity associated with it. It's extremely mm. expensive, and it, but it's justified because of the damage that this mm. oxalate does. Well, we can go in with RNAi and turn off the production of oxalate. Mm. And in the absence of oxalate, you no longer have a problem. Mm. So we believe our RNAi-based treatment for primary hyperoxaluria will be a curative treatment for this rare, extremely serious mm -hmm. genetic disorder. This should be a real benefit to the patients, of course, sure. and the patients' families, but also to the whole medical system because the cost of treatment for kidney transplant and liver transplant, the dialysis that leads up to that, all the follow-up and complications that occur because of these surgeries, human consequence on the patients aside, mm -hmm. that's extremely expensive running into the millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Even a, um, I think, fairly high-priced pharmaceutical, what this would have to be, mm -hmm. will be a benefit to the whole system and a huge benefit to the patients yeah. and their families. Wow, interesting. Okay, now there's more still. A preclinical program in cardiovascular disease for hypercholesterolemia. So, um, and that targets the PCSK9 gene. Tell this me is, explain all that. Sure, thing. this is an emerging treatment area for cholesterol uh, as a problem. This is the other end of the spectrum of primary hyperoxaluria. It's still extremely serious disease, but where primary hyperoxaluria is a small number of patients, hypercholesterolemia runs mm -hmm. into the millions of okay. patients. Mm -hmm. Is there this are, a genetic or no? Or is this something This is not lifestyle. a genetic disease. Okay. Um, you could say lifestyle, but a lot of it's predisposition. Okay. What genes did you draw in the genetic lottery? Sure. It's not that you have a particular defect, but your combination leads you to have more cholesterol. Okay. And maybe your lifestyle, mm -hmm. right. we all Contribute. like a good steak now yeah, and then, or a lot of people yes, do. Yes, we do. Um, <laughs> we'll contribute to that, and frankly, some of it's just kind of luck. Mm -hmm. So in, in any event, um, cholesterol management is one of the great public health challenges sure. across the country. Um, there are existing treatments that for the majority of people do a reasonably good job. People are familiar with statins, Lipitor, mm -hmm. Crestor. Sure. Tens of millions of people take those drugs. They're still 
millions of people who are not adequately controlled. And through this new treatment modality, turning off the PCSK9 gene, we can bring cholesterol control to those patients. Mm -hmm. Now there are some PCSK9 drugs on the market now, mm -hmm. but with our RNAi system, the Galaxy Technology Platform, we can convert what is a fairly challenging and inconvenient treatment regimen for the patients into a simple, probably once every six months, little insulin-like injection okay. to achieve full cholesterol control, so literally for millions of people. not too much interference in someone's life, but a way to control that problem. Very convenient for the mm -hmm. patients, and actually also likely very attractive to the pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. and the insurance companies that mm -hmm. pay for the mm -hmm. drugs. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a shot every six months, it's probably going to be a nurse practitioner type individual who gives you a phone call and says, okay. I want you to take that shot. And that's going to ensure mm -hmm. compliance. Right now, were people supposed to take a pill every day? Mm -hmm. You can imagine that there are a lot of people who don't actually take the pill every day. Sure. If you're traveling, whatever, it's hard. Yeah, yeah it's, and you're talking about doing this for years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe you're good in the first year and right. then it slacks off and you lose the benefits if you're not doing it. A shot every six months should be extremely easy to comply with and all the patients on treatment are likely to get the full benefit of the drug mm -hmm. and not only partial benefit because they skipped a dose or you know, yeah. didn't bring their bottle of pills on vacation sure. or something sure. like that. Okay, so 2017, mm -hmm. sounds like that could be a really pivotal year. I think you. it will be a pivotal year. Right now, I don't believe that the Wall Street is appreciating mm -hmm. the value of our company and what we're able to do. Um, it is the case that the pharma industry is appreciating what we can okay. do. 2017 is a time where I believe we'll enter into collaborations with pharmaceutical companies. That'll be a big benefit to our company. I mentioned there are a lot more opportunities that we can pursue on our own, mm -hmm. but we can pursue those additional opportunities in conjunction with pharma partners. Sure. So I think this is a year for those collaborations. It's also the year where we'll have a whole series of preclinical data packages for different diseases. We already have presented those for primary hyperoxaluria. We've presented the initial data for PCSK9, but additional rare diseases, hepatitis B, chronic liver disease, we'll have more monkey data, and that tends to be predictive of how well things are gonna work in people mm -hmm. rolling out this year. And the first regulatory filing for primary hyperoxaluria where the FDA, we will file with the FDA for them to allow us to start clinical trials around the end of the year. So we should be start treating patients around the end of the year, Brilliant. beginning of next year, okay. and hopefully bringing a functional cure to this primary yes. hyperoxaluria patient community that really needs something. Well, there's a lot going on there. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, because it's such a broad opportunity for us, I think that there are uh, a, there's a snowball effect now that we've solved the technology. Our Galaxy platform allows us to, in a very simple way, convert the, this RNAi technology into a pharmaceutical against any particular gene. Now that we've cracked that code, we can really sort of roll that out against a whole series of opportunities. So the snowball is just starting to roll down the hill. The first program to go into humans will be primary hyperoxaluria, and then it's uh, every six months or so, there's gonna be another one that goes out. We're gonna be able to build over a small number of years, two, three years, four years rolling forward, a really interesting broad pipeline, both for drugs we'll commercialize on our own, as well as ones we'll commercialize in conjunction with pharma. I think from this point forward, we're likely to be a very interesting growth story for investors. Wow, well, we're definitely going to watch. So thank you so much, Doug, for joining us, sharing the story of Dicerna. And just fascinating. The human body's fascinating, isn't it's it? It's a pleasure to be here. It's an exciting yeah. opportunity and an exciting time to be involved in biotechnology. Good. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you as well for joining us on Small Cap Nation. So for more information on uh, some companies doing some interesting things, you can go to smallcapnation.com. Have a great day.